So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to find out the proper way to save a file. Sheetcam likes to open DXF and SVG files. So what we want to do is save this as a DXF file. Let's go up to File and let's Save As. Now it defaults to BBCD. If you save it as a BBCD, you will not see this in Sheetcam when you go to bring in your geometry. We want to save this as a DXF. So DXF, I can't tell you enough. Let's say Wonder Bread. Who named that? <laughs> okay, it's it save. Oh, yep, that's over right. Okay, now we're done with Bobcad. We we did our job. Let's open it up in Sheet Cam. Let's import our drawing. There's Wonder Bread. Let's bring it in. Yep, we're all happy there. Okay, so now holes. There's an event here that happens. It's a physics event. It is a space-time event, okay? It's it's like the, the track race where the two runners, there's one runner on the inside track and one on the outside. They're both exerting the same amount of energy, but the runner on the inside wins the race in less time. This is because he is running around a smaller radius. Same goes for plasma. When we cut small features like holes, we want to cut a percentage of our recommended cut speed. Percentages can be as low as 40%. For these holes, we're going to go 60% or, or close to it. So what we want to do is click on this little Edit Contours button here. Let's draw a window over our holes where we can pick them individually. And let's right click our mouse button and let's create a new layer. Let's call it layer 2. Hit OK. Go back to my cursor here. Now let's process this. We want to pick our layer 2. Let's call it 60% uh, of 190. We'll just average it out. And we want to do an overcut. And what an overcut will do for you is as your beam um, ends its toolpath making that circle whole, what, over, what, what the beam will do, the plasma cutter will shut the beam energy off but continue the airflow. And this cools the consumables, adds life to your consumables. And uh, with doing that, it will actually gouge out um, your hole because your hole still has an energy in it. It's hot. The tool path is still hot. So we overcut it. Overcut will continue along the geometry for a set amount and it will um, allow that air to flow out um, without causing that gouge. So let's do an overcut and uh, let's let's pick a path rule. What it, what it, this path rule on holes will do is it will actually shut torchite control off. We do not want this thing to react to voltage. We just want it to stay at a static height throughout the cut. Let's do uh, yep. We'll do an arc lead in of 0.1 and a perpendicular uh, lead out of 0.1, and let's see what she does here. Okay, look at that. We're cutting on. The outside offset, we need to edit this really quick. Let's edit this. We want to pick our inside offset. Here we go. It's going to start here, continue around, and overcut and come out. Now we want to process the outside. I'll do another operation. Pick our outside offset. I'll pick the correct layer for outside. Remember where we were? We were at 190 inches per minute. Now, if, if you can't remember where you were, we can we can pick our our tool again, and it will default back to that that uh, tool cut speed. We want zero overcut. We don't need overcut. We don't want a path rule. Then we'll leave the same lead in and lead out. That's it. Okay. Now we have our cut path going around our part and our direction. So once we do that. We can run the post processor and we're done. I know you're going to have a really good time with this feature because you will get excellent results. So have fun and good luck.